Here we are, thinking through the Word for another week. This week in Ezekiel chapter 34. Real briefly, remember that Ezekiel, Old Testament prophet, prophesying at the time of the Babylonian captivity in 605, uh, Daniel and his friends are taken captive. In 597, Ezekiel is taken in a second wave of captives. And then he begins his ministry as a prophet and preacher in Babylon. So his work um, first was that of prediction. So he would prophesy the fall of Jerusalem in 586, the third and final wave of assault by the Babylonians against Jerusalem. And then he would spend his life preaching to the captive Israelites in Babylon. Uh, and much of, his, much of his ministry includes prophecy of the hope and restoration of God's people. Uh, he's assuring them that God's plan is not complete. I want us to look at chapter 34, Ezekiel 34, and understand how Ezekiel's ministry of preaching and prophesying to Israel is put into the language of shepherds. In this chapter of 31 verses, there are at least 16 that I count, uh, 16 uses of the word shepherd or shepherds. This chapter fits well with our recent study of pastoral ministry in 1 Timothy chapter 3, especially when we realize that the word pastor has pretty much been hijacked by the church from that realm of agriculture. Uh, the word pastor means shepherd. So I want us to look at uh, what... Ezekiel had to say to the pastors, to the shepherds, uh, in his prophecy in Ezekiel 34. And really, this chapter falls into three parts. Verses 1 through 10 is the Lord's condemnation of bad shepherds. Uh, so let's start there with condemnation. And let's see how this shows up. Ezekiel is told to prophesy against, against the shepherds. Say to them, even to the shepherds, the, there's a bit of surprise there that this prophecy is going against the shepherds, not just to them. Thus says the Lord, ah, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves. And then the sh shockingly obvious question, should not shepherds feed the sheep? He goes on, you clothe yourselves and yet you slaughter the sheep. You do not feed the sheep. The weak sheep you haven't strengthened. The sick you haven't healed. The injured you haven't bound up. The strayed you have not brought back. You haven't, the lost you have not sought. In contrary to all that compassion and pursuing love, there is this condemnation. Force and harshness have characterized the ruling of the shepherd. So, conclusion, they were scattered because there was no shepherd. This kind of shepherding is essentially no shepherding. It is not what a true shepherd does. The indictment continues in this description. The sheep were scattered. They wandered, scattered, none to search or seek for them. And because of this abandoning of their role, therefore, based on all this, you shepherds, 
Hear the word of the Lord. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely because my sheep have become a prey, my sheep have become food for the wild animals since there was no shepherd condemnation, because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep. Again, condemnation. We're still, because of this bad shepherding, this is what the Lord is saying. The shepherds have fed themselves, have not fed the sheep. Therefore, restated, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds. God versus shepherds. Not a pretty picture. This is, this is clearly the language of judgment. Not for, but against. I will require my sheep at their hand. In other words, they will give an account for the sheep that have suffered and, and those sheep that have been lost. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths that they may not be food for them. And with this statement of God, I will, we have now a transition to the second portion of this chapter. First, it was the Lord's condemnation. Now it's the Lord's commitment. Commitment to shepherding his sheep. And it began with that declaration of, I will, I will rescue my sheep. And now that is going to open the floodgates of God's shepherding care. Verse 11, I myself will search. I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks his flock when he is among his sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered. It continues. I will bring them out from the peoples, will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel. I will feed them in good pasture. They will lie down in good grazing land. This is God's commitment to shepherding his people. Note any one of these phrases and cling to it for the shepherding care that you need. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I myself will make them lie down. I will seek the lost. I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. I will feed them in justice. And comforting still, those that oppose God's sheep will be destroyed, judged. He sees and will deal with them. And all of this in verse 16 seems to be the echo of back to verse 4 where the other shepherds had failed so miserably. In the same language, God says, Behold, I will judge between sheep and sheep and between rams and goats. In other words, nothing has been lost to the eye of God. He's, he has seen it all. He knows exactly how his sheep have suffered and he will care for them. Well, I want us to skip down. He continues to unfold his promise. Uh, verse 22, I will rescue my flock. I will judge between sheep and sheep. And now we come to a key part of God's promise. He's made it abundantly clear that he will do all these things as their shepherd. And now in verse 23, this picture changes a little bit. And he says, not I will be, but now he says, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them he shall feed them and be their shepherd. So first, God, the Lord, was the shepherd, and now it's his servant, son of David. And yet the very next verse goes back to, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them, 
There's this interweaving of these roles, of these promises. I will shepherd them and I will set my shepherd over them. I will be their God, but my servant will be their prince, their king. And what we see now, beginning in verse 25, having already seen God's condemnation of the bad shepherds, his commitment to shepherding his people, now we see his covenant, a covenant of peace. Through the shepherd, through the son of David, through the king, through that prince of peace, God will establish a covenant so that his sheep may dwell securely. And I will make them in the places all around my hill a blessing. I will make them a blessing and the places a blessing. I will send down the showers in their season and there shall be showers of blessing. You've sung that old gospel song. Here it is in Ezekiel. It's God's promise that just as the rain waters, nourishes, and greens up the earth, so our souls are watered and nourished and prosperous because God has sent his shepherd king. And the trees of the field will yield their fruit, fruit, increase, security, confidence. They will know that I am the Lord. Break the bars of their yoke. Deliver them from the hand of those who enslave them. No more prey to nations or beasts. They will dwell securely, not afraid. This is God's promise, his covenant. They will have plantations, no more hunger, no longer suffer reproach. They will know that I am the Lord who is with them, that they are my people, declares the Lord God. You are my sheep. I am your God. These four words and these four words equal the great confidence and assurance of the Christian life, the covenant of peace. How can I have peace? Because I know that I am his sheep and he is my God. This is the Lord's covenant that is accomplished through the shepherd king, the son of David, Jesus Christ. So I don't think it is anything near coincidence that we read in Luke chapter two that Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. And of course, then they announce in verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Of course, they were announcing peace. It's because the promised shepherd had come. God himself as a shepherd a shepherd king, a king of peace. And so Merry Christmas. Again, we celebrate God's promises being fulfilled in Jesus. And my friends, please, please remember 
God says, you are my sheep. I am your God. What will that do for you today?